Welcome to Direct Talk, interviews with leaders, visionaries, and pioneers who are shaping Asia and the rest of the world. Our guest today is Todu Oki, a leading advocate for the use of therapy dogs. The animals provide comfort and affection to people who need it, including seniors and those suffering from illness. Oki is said to be the person who officially introduced therapy dogs to Japan. And the dogs he trains are all stray or lost animals that would otherwise be put down. We asked Oki why he is such a passionate champion of therapy dogs. This is a school run by Toru Oki, where therapy dogs are trained. Oki has been raising therapy dogs in Japan for over 30 years. He currently owns roughly 40 therapy dogs, including those in the process of being trained. By learning and remembering the dog's name, a patient recovers names of family members that they've forgotten. That's one thing we do, memory. We can help bring back memory to a certain extent in people with dementia. Another thing therapy dogs can help with is rheumatism. A lot of elderly people who suffer from it don't move their hands much. Soon they can't even hold a spoon. Petting a dog gives them that movement. Through this physical contact with the dog, they become able to pick up a spoon again. They regain the ability to feed themselves. The dogs trained by Oki provide care to a total of 12,000 people annually. Today, he and his team are at a senior center in Tokyo. They've been coming here every month since 2004. This 68-year-old man has a condition that makes his muscles very weak. He says that before he worked with therapy dogs, he could barely walk. Rehabilitation is hard for everyone, but doing it together with a dog can make it fun. That's a big part of it. Let's walk together. Let's give it a shot together. And then you do it. You walk. Eventually, you see people who've been in wheelchairs for a long time stand up and walk around the room. They might walk dozens of meters. The dogs at this school are trained using a curriculum designed by Oki. This exercise teaches the dogs how to walk with someone using a cane. The dog must be able to match its speed to the person's. Eye contact. It's also vital that the dogs build trust with the patients they're working with by establishing eye contact. The full curriculum includes something like 50 different items and takes a dog two and a half years to master. But these dogs weren't bred for this work. All of them were strays rescued by Oki. Because they've been abandoned by their owners, many of them don't trust humans. They're afraid of them. So we live side by side with them to repair that relationship. Once we've rebuilt that trust, then we start training them. We're starting from a very negative place. But in two and a half years, they really grow up to become amazing through learning. I think dogs feel a sense of accomplishment like we do. When they bring their human companion joy, when they see them smiling, the person and the dog make each other happy. I've been bringing up therapy dogs for a long time, and so many times I've thought, the fact that dogs can't speak is actually a great thing. 
People can use words to tell lies. And we do shameful things sometimes. But with these dogs, they aren't like that. Toru Oki has been working with therapy dogs for a long time now, but originally he was best known as a musician. Oki was born in Tokyo in 1951. In 1976, he moved by himself to the United States. While there, he became the first person from East Asia to tour nationally as a blues singer. He had a successful run in the American music world, which included recording an album with Ben E. King. And Oki credits his impressive success to a very special dog. I was four years old, and I had a stutter. This was a long time ago, just after the war. As you'd expect, I was bullied. It was just what happened to you if you had something like that. But when I got home, I had my pet dog. She was the only one who'd wait for me to finish my sentences. No matter how much I stuttered, if I called her name, she'd come and lick my face. She was... She was my best friend, always right there with me, always snuggled up. She was my only friend. My dog saved me, no doubt about it. And then I heard American music on the American Forces radio station. I would just parrot the sounds to myself. And when I did that, I didn't stutter. Dogs and music definitely saved my life. Oki learned about therapy dogs when he was active as a blues singer in the States. Eventually, he decided he wanted to introduce therapy dogs to Japan. In 1985, he threw his fortune into opening a training school in the Tokyo suburbs. But initially, things didn't go the way he expected. At first, I brought one therapy dog back from the U.S. And I had to spend all my time explaining the idea to people, to government officials, to hospitals, other facilities. I said, this is what a therapy dog is. People didn't get it. They said, what place does a dog have in health care? Why should we let dogs in here? I think it was the fact that Japanese people just had a much different sense of their relationship with animals. I had to fight a battle for understanding. In 1992, right in the middle of this battle, Oki heard about a little mutt named Chirori, who had been abandoned in the dumpsters of a public housing complex. Chirori had been picked up by animal services and was going to be put down. Local children got in touch with Oki and begged him for help. The morning of the day Chirori was scheduled to die, Oki rescued the dog. At first, I didn't think a mutt could be trained to be a therapy dog. In the U.S., most therapy dogs were purebred, almost all of them. But after spending time with Chirori, I saw that she had so much love. Like, if she saw a sick dog, she would be very affectionate towards it. That settled things in my mind. If this dog was so full of love, and she could regain so much trust for humans, maybe she would become a good therapy dog. It was a gamble I was willing to take. So I taught her using the curriculum I had made, and she turned out to be a star student. Even the cane walking training. When she first saw a cane, she would start shaking because in the past she'd been beaten with canes and sticks. It was traumatic for her. So we had her sleep next to a cane and showed her, Chirori, no one's going to hit you with this. I would praise her when she completed a task successfully. Maybe she thought that if she stayed with me, she could survive. Whatever I asked of her, she always did her best. 
She learned so well and so fast. In the end, she became Japan's very first therapy dog. Chidori was the first dog from Japan to become a certified therapy dog. She began going to hospitals, community centers. And almost immediately, Chidori showed how a therapy dog could help sick people get better in terms of motor skills, language skills, and more. <laughs> For 13 years until her death in 2006, Chidori helped countless people and received over 30 commendations, including some from the national government. Without Chidori's work as the first one, therapy dogs wouldn't have become a thing in Japan. She did such a good job as Japan's first therapy dog. She fought the battle with me, showed Japan what a therapy dog can do. She created the model. People in the medical world had no choice but to acknowledge our success. And Chidori was a stray. A stray dog could become a therapy dog and could end up helping people. That was a huge part of it for me. A scared little mutt can get its confidence back, be trained, and help people. They can do a really good job. Why are these kinds of dogs good at therapy work? A lot of people wondered that. The reason is that all of these dogs have pain inside them. They know pain. And if they see a person in front of them who's hurting, they want to help that person. Someone helped me, and now I want to help someone. I think that's how they feel. It's been 26 years since Chidori became the first Japanese therapy dog. In that time, Oki has brought roughly 100 therapy dogs into this world. All of these dogs are strays that would have otherwise been put down. Some were born on the streets. Some were separated from their owners during the 311 disaster. Oki rescues dogs all over Japan. This dog on the leash was rescued in Fukushima. Oki's work rescuing strays and turning them into therapy dogs has made him a passionate advocate in the effort to stop the forced euthanization of animals. The number of dogs put down in Japan is shrinking, but the annual total still exceeds 10,000. What those animals all have in common is that they're going to be killed the next day. Wherever they lived, whoever abandoned them, whether they had a name or not, the next day they're going to the gas chamber. But if we can rescue these dogs and help them get better. I've met a lot of animal rights people in the United States. And they said to me, what's happening in your country is like the Auschwitz of cats and dogs. Those are their words. That's how they put it. And that made me think extremely seriously about this issue. My biggest desire is that we stop using these gas chambers in Japan. We're going to host the Olympics soon. We're inviting people from around the world. It's simply not okay to have gas chambers where we're killing cats and dogs. I think it's an urgent matter. All living things have the right to happiness. I've seen a lot of stray dogs in my day become amazing animals. These dogs can't be denied a chance to live. That's something I feel very strongly about. And that's the idea behind these words.